people are becoming very nervous. People are becoming very nervous about life. They're becoming very nervous about what to do. They're becoming very nervous about how to take care of the family. They're becoming very nervous about what they should tell one another, what they should do, where they should go. When November 3rd happens, there's going to be a lot of issues once the decision has been made as to who the president is going to be or will still remain, either one. Be mindful and be careful that when you are listening to people out here, peace to my family from the motherland, I see my family from Sierra Leone checking in, be mindful to understand that there are a lot of people out here with large platforms speaking very flagrantly, loosely and irresponsibly, not realizing that the people who follow them will literally do in real life what they are suggesting for them to do. What I mean by that is be careful, be careful with whom you put your trust in. Be careful when you're listening to people with large platforms or any platform who who are not living what it is that they are telling you to live, who are not doing what they're telling you to do, who are not showing what they are telling you to show. I'm saying this because I've seen a number of people who don't have the power to do at all what they're telling you to do. And some of these people I know personally. And I'm listening to them and I see what they're saying and I'm, I'm like, OK, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. People at home listen to what it is that we say. Everybody watching me right now, you, you're not watching me because you're not interested in what Brother Reza Islam is saying. You're watching because you're very interested and you know that nine times out of ten or ten times out of ten. Brother is going to say something that is logical, factual, positive. That is going to help me. That is going to evolve me, etc. I do my best to do that. But above all other things, I do my best to live what it is that I'm saying because I can't be hypocritical out here. People see me in the hood. People see me on the Internet. People see me all over the place and they know Brother Reza is the same way off of this camera. <laughs> just like he is on the camera, period. Period. But there are a lot of people who are not like that. So what I'm encouraging us to do is use your own mind, number one. Number two, be careful with whom you put your trust in and check. Verify if the person who is telling you to do certain things, verify if they're doing it. If it's right, then you should do it, period. You, you should, whatever's right, you should do anyway. <laughs> we should always do what's right, period. That, that's just number one. We don't we shouldn't have to need anyone to tell us to do what is right. If it's right, you should do it. If it's right, I should do it. If it's right, we should all do it, period. That that stands alone. However. Some people are bought off. Some people are being pushed in front of us to push us to vote. And when people ask me about voting, you can make your decision. Vote for whoever you choose. Vote for Biden if you choose. Vote for Trump if you choose. I don't care. If you're a Democrat, I don't care. If you're a Republican, I don't care. Why? Because the Republican Party and the Democratic Party don't care about us as a people, period. They never have. They never will. Uh, that's not an argument I'm going to go into. My major is political science. I'm very well understood and learned when it comes to politics. I can learn a lot more. I can absolutely learn a lot more. However, what I do know for a fact is that if we received exactly what it is that we needed and that we have been fighting for and crying for for so very long, then we would not be having arguments about who to vote for because we would have been fulfilled and satisfied. And we will we would have had what it is that we have been fighting to receive. So therefore, you telling me about a white man versus another white man, one devil versus Lucifer or Satan and Lucifer or one pedophile is better than another pedophile. Or this racist is a little more covert and hiding his racism while this one is a little more open and direct with his racism. You're not going to sell me the lesser of two evils, because what does that end with? evil you just sold to me the idea that well listen you gotta elect one of these evil people who don't necessarily give a damn about you but you gotta elect one of them and you only say that because you believe that there are only two options how in the hell are you going to try to convince me and anyone when there is no proof to validate your statement 
how the hell can you tell me to vote for this person or that person when you have no proof with which to validate your statement? Show me why I should vote for them. Why? Well, Trump did this and that. No, Trump didn't do much of what the hell you're talking about. A lot of what you're saying he did is actually something that fell over from the Obama administration. Stop it. And then the good that he did do, great. Wonderful. But he is still a racist white man, and I'm not going to trust him nor this government wholeheartedly. The government itself, regardless to whoever sits in that chair, Joe Biden included. This government does not care about you nor me because its very foundational beliefs and principles that are being perpetuated to this very day depends upon the amount of people that it can oppress. And that means they must have the level of oppression to be at a certain level, starting with black people who have to always remain at the bottom. If they give us the ability to have a leg up, then literally their entire system will collapse. Their system stands because we are the ones that it stands on top of. So just be mindful when you're talking about things like this. Do not go for the lesser of two evils nonsense. Do not tell me if you're not voting for Biden or if you're not voting for Trump or if you're not voting, you're voting for Trump. See, see the, this insanity, the stupidity, the idiocy, the asinine level of debauchery, the minimal, minuscule, minute, ridiculous retardedness that I hear people spewing out of their damn mouth. Don't ever tell our people that. Then, on the other hand, however, don't be out here telling the people, man, y'all better get guns. November 3rd, y'all better get guns. Don't, hey, be responsible. Be balanced. If you want to vote, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you not to. But if you ask me reason, why are you not voting? I'm going to tell you the truth. Don't, it's okay. I'm not a Republican nor a Democrat. Leave it alone. Because the moment... The white man, because it will only be a old white man, gets into this office and the behaviors start to kick in as they always do. Then whoever voted is going to be held accountable. And whoever did not vote will also be held accountable. But above all of this, if our condition does not improve, we are held accountable. I'm not going to rely on another white man to change the condition of my people. I don't trust you enough to do that. At the end of the day, you are going to do whatever you do. But at the end of the day, I must do what I need to do. We must do what we need to do. Period. You vote for whoever you choose to vote for. This white sky daddy versus that white sky daddy. This slave master versus, versus that slave master. This pedophile versus that pedophile. This liar versus that liar. This rapist versus that rapist. This disgusting individual, that disgusting individual. Leave it alone. We have to come up with our agenda, which we have a number of them. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad has the agenda that has been standing for well over 75 years. It is called the Muslim program, but it's not just for when you say Muslim, it deals with people who submit to do the will of God. That's the definition of the word. Go and study and research the Muslim program by Elijah Muhammad and tell me that every single point of what the Muslims want is not exactly what we want as a people. Everything from land, everything from reparations, everything from... The people who are in prison due to certain laws that shouldn't have been placed in there to begin with, including the 1994 crime bill, which was a joint venture between Democrats and Republicans. That's another reason why I laugh when people even bring up Joe Biden or say because Democrats did that. No, 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 no. Joe Biden was a Democrat. The president that he was under was a Republican. So Republicans and Democrats helped with the 1994 crime bill. This is why I don't listen to the nonsense, the non sequitur, idiotic little nuances here. Stop trying to sell idiocy to intelligent people. Black people have awakened. We have, we have risen up to a level now to where you can't hide anything from us and you can't lie to us anymore. The problem now is too many of us are going along with the nonsense. Just because you feel that the only thing you can do is vote for this white man or that white man does not mean you get to foist that upon the people. Sit down, learn something, educate yourself. This goes for all of us. But don't get up here and just say, vote, 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 because that's very easy to say. But then vote for what? What am I getting? What are we getting? I'm not relying on a white man to do anything for me. And some of you are like, well, reason why are you stuck on color? Because this is the same damn color who has been doing and what has always been the prominent color that has dominated us across the planet between the last 400 to 6,000 years, partially because we allowed them to. But my point is, 
be careful of who you're listening to. And I'm not saying you have to listen to me. I'm telling you to think for yourself. I'm telling you to believe in God. Number one, unite with us as a people. Number two, pool your resources so that you and I and us can get something for ourselves. Number three, stop causing division and arguing over nonsense that you don't have a damn control over to begin with, including your religious title, including your political party, including your gender, including which part of the country or the planet you live in. Well, I'm from the East Coast. I'm from the West Coast. Knock it off. Because to this system, you are still a nigga. There is nothing else that needs to be said there. This is why I don't I don't vibe with the people who try to tell me reason. Stop talking unity with these people. That people Don't ever try to come at me and say a damn thing to me. When what we are pushing is unity and you try to step between that, then my question to you is, who the hell do you work for? Because the only thing that we have not tried entirely was unity. And it is the only thing that will work. And if you're trying to come between me and pushing unity among my people, then my question is again, who the hell do you work for? At this time. Anyone pushing divisiveness needs to be looked at as suspect and needs to be called out for such. Anyone pushing to just vote alone without requesting and demanding something that we get for it in exchange needs to be looked at as suspect. You're not going to tell me to vote for this pedophile or that pedophile and say, well, this one is a, a lighter pedophile than the other pedophile. I mean, this one raped, you know, 20 children while this one only raped 12 or 13. That's what it sounds like. Again, don't get mad at me. Because this is something that we all need to look at. This is something that we all need to understand. Black women, black men. We don't have time to sit and rely on white men anymore to do things for us that we can do for ourselves. Period. I'm 30 years young. I'm not about to sit here and be under this system continually crying for the same damn thing. I'm not interested in it. I'm not even close to interested in it. Not even close. You shouldn't either. Again, vote for whoever you choose. Don't try to shame somebody because they choose not to vote. Because one of the options out of the three, not just the two, is to either vote for Republican or Democrat, or you can vote for the Green Party, you can vote for any of these other parties. The two prominent ones that the decision will be made between is Republican and Democrat. But if you choose not to vote, that is called withholding your vote. Because you do not feel that either candidate addresses your demands. Neither one of them really provides what it is that you want for us as a people, and therefore you choose to withhold your vote. That is the third option. And lastly, above any and all these things, if you do not know anything about the electoral colleges, then you are being played to begin with. If you don't know the real deal, the real truth, which is these individuals are selected. Then once they are selected and put up on the roster like a glorified version of some NFL players, NBA players being drafted from college. They're put up in front of us so that we can elect them, but they have already been selected prior. They already know who is going to be the president. They already have his agenda set up. And the steps that he that they want him to do already. Neither one of them are qualified. Neither one of them really give a damn about black people. Neither one of them are even coherent enough to care about anyone other than themselves. Remember the fact that they are liars and they always lie. Some of you get tripped up because you hear Joe Biden say something that sounds sweet and it speaks to your heart because you're so easily manipulated. It's very easy to convince black people because we're naturally the people of God. So we go off of feeling. We don't go off of facts all the time. You go off of feeling. So you like to hear things that sound nice. This is why Obama became successful because he was a brother by the skin. And at that time, in 2008, America was reaching a very high boiling point. So they chose to select a black face to push white supremacy. But by using a black face, they restored a level of trust in this government because the trust had already been broken down tremendously from the people toward the government. So they stated. Selection. Use that black man. His campaign was funded heavily by Goldman Sachs and others. And they used him to gain the black vote and the brown vote. And therefore, it worked perfectly. It worked so well, they pushed it for two terms and we voted for two terms. Understand, don't get stuck on it being Obama. Look at the puppeteer. 
Look at the mastermind behind the scene. Stop getting stuck on the personality and look at the position of power. It ain't Obama I'm talking about. It's the fact that his face was used. They put a black face on white supremacy. That's all they did. Prior to that, who else? What are you talking about? George Bush. He pushed white supremacy. Boom. Prior to that, Bill Clinton. Prior to that, what is it? George Bush Sr. Prior to that. They don't give a damn. They don't care. Just be very mindful. So even when people try to do that nonsense of pointing the finger at Obama, this government has never given a damn about you. So just to be very mindful here and to be factually correct, he was selected to push the same agenda. But because he had a black face, we would trust him more without questioning. And therefore, that was a perfect way for them to push a lot of things that would not have gone over well if it were another white man, if it were Mitt Romney <laughs> who ran against him. Or the other individual, uh, the war veteran. Understand how politics works. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that politic means multiple bloodsuckers. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad states that very well. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has stated it very well also. Vote if you choose, the minister said. Vote if you choose, but do not vote alone. Demand and put up an agenda and whoever becomes the president, whoever sits in that seat, we must force them to fulfill our agenda, period. Some people say, oh, yeah, well, I'm not voting because of this or I am voting because of this. That's perfectly fine, whatever you choose. But at the end of the day, the work that needs to be done has to be done now and be done after anyway. It doesn't matter who sits in the seat. It is the same seat of Pharaoh. This is the same government. This is Babylon. This is the modern day Rome. This is the modern day Egypt. This is the modern day Every country that was destroyed because they completely went against what God said to do. And they're doing everything against God. Everything. Horrific. Everything. Pushing pedophilia. Everything. Everything. So I have no belief in this system. It has not given me any valid, solid, solidified proof that I should trust this system. That I should trust anyone who comes to us on behalf of the system, there is no way that this is going to work because it was never destined to work. This is not a system that was destined to exist forever. So the moment you get that through your head and you say, fine, I'm going to go ahead and vote for whoever I want to vote for, but I'm going to get ready to get this work in. Buying up the land and demanding that they give us the land. Reparations is still on the table, regardless to whoever is on these major platforms opening their mouth saying, I don't want to hear about reparations. It was more than just the, the sister who said this. Multiple people who said this saying, I don't want to hear about no reparations and all that. No, 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 no. Knock it off. You don't speak for us at all, because not only would your ancestors come back and slap the hell out of you, but you would never tell a Jewish person to forget the Holocaust ever. You would never tell a Jewish person. Stop talking about Hitler. You wouldn't. They wouldn't. Their Holocaust lasted 12 years. Ours never ended. What the hell are you talking about? They receive billions every year from America. They're also going to receive another chunk of money. We never received anything, including apologies from this government, with the exception of Bill Clinton. I believe and maybe one other person who apologized slightly. But words without economics, words without land, words without anything to support your statement is simply symbol without substance. Brother Martin Luther King said, Freedom without land to cultivate is freedom and famine at the same time. Meaning, you're going to let me free. Take my hands off the chains and let me go run out there. But you take my hands away from the chains. You, you unchain my hands, my neck, my feet. But you gave me no land. You gave me no money. You gave me no buildings, no property, no infrastructure, no anything. You literally destroyed me, removed my name, my language, my culture, my religion, my God, my folkways, my mores, my norms, my entire understanding of exactly who and what the hell it is that I am. And then you release me into the world as a confused as hell person trying to figure everything out by myself with no resources with which to rectify my situation. And therefore, I have only two options. Either I go into a level of criminality with which to survive. Or I turn around and I put myself back in chains. And what we are doing now is encouraging people to go back in chains. And that is not what I'm going to encourage. I will not include or encourage voting alone. I will not include or encourage voting Republican. I will not include nor encourage voting Democrat. I will not include nor encourage any of this incessant insanity that you continue to push on the people as if it's going to work 
None of these people on major platforms know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to the basics in politics. None of them. And for those who are paid and unpaid, for those who are afraid and fearless, the point is tell the people to do something for themselves because there is no other group of people doing what the hell that we're doing. The Mexican groups and celebrities are not out here yelling to their people all day vote. Some here and there, but not to the degree that we're doing. Vote, but don't ask for nothing. Vote, but don't put down an agenda. Vote, but don't ask them to give you anything in exchange for your vote. Vote. They're not doing that. The Jewish people are not doing that. The Indians <laughs> from India, the ones who own 7-Elevens and things of that, of that nature, they're not doing that. They're not. We're the only ones doing that. Shut up and vote. The hell you mean shut up and vote? Who are you talking to? See, you, we're treated like children because that's how we operate. It's like when you go to jail, you are you are now a ward of the state. W.A.R.D. Ward, meaning an unintellectual child that needs to now be taken care of by an authority, meaning a government, meaning a person who is who is a, a adult who has a level of knowledge. We are not wards of the state. Black people are intelligent people. We created intelligence when we created the first set of human beings that came from our womb, the black men and woman. We know thought because thought is us. We know intelligence because intelligence is us. Claim it and stop acting as though you don't know anything. Stop allowing them to trick you with some soft words. Stop allowing them to trick you with certain celebrities because you love their personality. I love a lot of our brothers and sisters who are artists and celebrities. I, I love them. I appreciate them. But a lot of them are very ignorant and don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I have told many of them personally that you must be responsible when you are using your platform because our people Listen to what you say and then they go and do what you tell them to do. So be careful about what you tell them to do, what comes out of your mouth and what instructions you give them. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. Be careful. Yes, I'm a member of the Nation of Islam. Yes. I'm a Muslim. Damn right. Absolutely. But I will tell you this. I will tell you this, if what you're going to do is use religion to go against others right now, use gender, well, those are women, oh, these Negroes, the, listen, listen, they are planning to do so much within the next two weeks that the moment it hits you, you will understand, damn, I should have been preparing, damn, I should not have been wasting so much time. Wow, I wasted all that money doing what? Damn, I'm sitting here just smoking and drinking. Damn, I'm sitting here not really paying attention to nothing going on. Wow, the economy is upside down. I'm not really looking at it. Damn, they're going to shut down this area. Damn, they're going to shut down that area. And I just really haven't been paying attention. I just been kind of stuck on watching things on social media and gossip and things that don't matter. Damn, I'm just really, you know, hey, it is what it is, you know. We're too comfortable. And the last thing I'm going to say is you, you don't realize that, that you're at war. You don't realize that. Many of us do. Many of us are waking up. So I have to give credit to those that understand this. I have to give credit to those who are waking up. I have to give credit to those who absolutely do understand, who are being prepared, who are exercising, who are looking at gold and silver, who are looking at prepping their homes and stacking up and stocking up on gallons upon gallons of water and stocking up on dried foods and stocking up on first aid equipment and stocking up on everything that you would need just in case the electricity goes out, just in case the gas goes off, just in case you can't get to the bank because the banks are closed. Don't ever believe that because things have not hit your front door yet that they can't and that they won't. Please don't be that naive. Don't, don't, don't do that. Just don't. Reza, are you preparing? You're damn right I am. Reza, are you exercising? Yes, I am. Reza, are you stocking up on water? You're damn right. Reza, what about what about uh um you know stocking up on food? Are you yes I am. Are you training? You do you know how to fight? Yes, I absolutely do. Are you teaching other people, your family? Are you coming together with your family? You figuring out escape routes and routes and things to move on? And do you have your passport? Do you yes, yes, and yes. You must understand that war is what you've been in. The difference is you haven't mentally been present. You physically right in it. You're in it. You're, you're in it. It's like a football game. You're on the field. You just don't realize that you're on the field. You just don't realize that. So now, now, 
When everything hits the fan, you're not going to be able to blame anybody. You can't blame the white man no more. He told you who the hell he was. He told you I'm a devil. And don't get mad if you're white watching me because you know what I'm talking about. The only reason why you would get offended is if you're not being honest. The system doesn't give a damn about everyone, including poor black, po poor black or poor white. Number one, it doesn't give a damn about our black folk, but they don't even care about their poor white cousins. They don't care. And I had to just kind of knock you into present time a little bit because you're comfortable. And I'm watching and I'm noticing people talking. I'm noticing what we're doing. We're focusing on all this other stuff that don't matter. It's like, what are we doing, man? What, what, what are we doing? Seriously. So I'm going to end it on this note here, which is get your life prepared. Start figuring out exactly what your purpose is. Start figuring out exactly what it is that you can contribute to yourself, your family, your neighborhood, your community, your nation of people, etc. Please be mindful that again. Once the person is elected, because they've already been selected, the agenda will go into activity, period. The international bankers, the electoral colleges, you must understand the trilateral commission, you must understand the... <laughs> uh, there are so many levels to this thing, man, that it's, it's very, very, very sickening when you are watching the basics of people leading you down the wrong direction. Again, I'm not pushing you to any religious belief. I'm pushing you to a logical frame of thinking, plain and simple, because I know exactly what's going down. Minister Farrakhan has already laid it out for us. If you haven't watched his July 4th address, I encourage you to do so. But it's really getting real out here and I'm watching it. I'm seeing what they're doing. And it's like, damn, if our people don't know what to do right now, then when it hits you, it will be too late. And that's why. Too many of us. Too many of us. Have to really get. We have to get prepared. We have to get our mind right. We have to get up on our job. So November 3rd, once the person who has been selected becomes elected and either remains the president or becomes the new president, commander in chief, etc., etc. Just know that there is not going to be an easy circumstance happening in the street. It's not going to be uh, an easy circumstance happening in the street. Whoever wins the position, it's going to be a problem for others. So be prepared. You know, again, stock up on food and water and things you would need in your house just in case you're not able to leave the house. Just in case they declare martial law because of certain things that may happen. There have been there have been a lot of announcements from different groups and organizations that if Trump doesn't win, there will be civil war. Other groups have made the announcement if <laughs> Biden doesn't win, there will be civil war like this is not this is a real thing. So what I'm not doing, I'm not pushing fear. I'm educating and just letting y'all know. So knock it off with the people who believe that this is fear mongering. There's no fear mongering here. This is reality. When it hits you, you will not be able to say someone didn't tell you. Minister for our comments telling us this for three generations. A generation is roughly 20 years. He's been telling us this for 60 years minimum. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad before him and Brother Malcolm X and Kyle Muhammad and Brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey and all of our aunts, they've been telling us this for a very long time. So I'm not frustrated with y'all. You know that. You know, you're my people. I love y'all. And I'm saying this to you because I'm frustrated with the understanding and the witnessing of those with large platforms who are not telling you this. Who are telling you to vote, but not telling you to buy land, who are telling you to vote, but who are not telling you about the economy and how to look at switching your money into different forms of currency, who are telling you to vote, but who are not telling you to stock up on food and water, etc. Who are telling you to vote, but who are not telling you that they themselves are buying up land. They themselves are switching out currency. They themselves are getting their passports. They themselves are doing a lot of these things, but they're not telling you to do it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just watching. Then on the other end, of course, you have a lot of them who are trying to create the division between the genders. Knock it off. Just knock it off. The black men and women have no business fighting against one another because neither one of us own the system that is oppressing us both. And I'm gonna say that one more time. The black men and women have no business fighting one another because neither one of us own the system that is oppressing us both. So if you ever try to come at me 
about talking about <laughs> the black woman and uplifting the black woman. I don't give a damn what you got to say. I don't care what you have to say. Then on the other hand, if you come at me about talking about and uplifting the black man, I don't care what you have to say. I don't give a damn about what you have to say. I love the black man and woman, period. And if you don't like the black man and woman because of specific individuals in your life, then that is you. But don't ever try to push that on nobody else. This includes too many people with large platforms who are generalizing black men or generalizing black women because of the actions of a few. That is wrong. It is evil. It is wicked. It's not right. It's unfair. Tons of black women out here doing their best to be good sisters and women because they want a good man. Tons of brothers out here being strong brothers, doing their best to fight against the system of white supremacy on a daily basis, trying to be an upstanding man, do the right thing because he wants a good woman. So knock it off. You don't know people because you ain't talking to people. You don't know people because you're not around them. Get off of social media listening to people who are miserable with millions of followers, I, I, I might add. And get with real people. Pull away from social media. Stop attacking each other on social media. Like Brother Student Minister Ishmael said today when he was speaking from Mas Mariam, which is the Nation of Islam's headquarters. He said, stop attacking one another in public because it only benefits the enemy. It doesn't benefit us. Why the hell would I attack a black woman publicly, talk about her? And by the way, when I mentioned Sister Jamil Hill, that wasn't an attack at all. I didn't attack her. And she didn't take it that way. She even responded on her page and she did say that she would actually, that she respects my work and that, uh, that, that she is considering having a conversation with me. That's all. Because we have to hold one another accountable. And because she said what she said publicly about black men, etc., then it must be addressed in public. Now, there are people who are paid on behalf of his enemy to create division. Now, those are going to be extremely and swiftly addressed quickly. But the ones who are genuinely our people, go to them and talk to them. That's all. I want to have a conversation. I'm not, I'm not attacking a black woman. Don't ever get that twisted. All right. I don't, I don't do that. And I don't attack black men either. That's not what I do. You all should know that by now. No, no, no. But holding someone accountable is something that we should do. We should hold one another accountable. But start contacting one another off of social media. Call one another right now because if you don't know this by now, the psychological warfare that is going on is they are getting us to fight one another on social media and getting us used to it so that once stuff starts cracking off in real life off of social media, we will be so or have been, will have been so desensitized to where the likelihood or the inclination of us fighting one another physically will be much higher. They are provoking us to do this. Why? Because as we are divided, they will conquer. It is the oldest trick that they have always used. But the difference is that it has evolved in its strategy and its ability with which to permeate through another system. And that system is called social media. Everything seems like it's just natural, like we naturally are doing this. We're not naturally hating each other. Who the hell made you think that? So the moment we start attacking one another, they're watching it and the algorithmic system within social media starts to check it and fester it and build it and add more fuel to the fire. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Then it goes from regular people with a few hundred followers to people with thousands, then those with tens of thousands, then those with millions. And then they get certain celebrities to go at celebrities and then people watching. Then they have agent provocateurs, the over 30,000 FBI agents who have social media accounts and they keep sowing seeds of division here and there, here and there. And before you know it, we're going at each other's throat the same way we did when they came into the Holy Land and we invited them in and they caused the shedding of blood because of their mischief and their telling lies as a third party stepping in between. Right? Stepping in between. Creating these problems. Oh, look, hey, Reza, you know, I heard so-and-so said this about you. Yeah, you should go look, go look, I'm telling you. Then they go to the other side to that person like, hey, I heard Reza was talking about you. Look, look, look. Then we start fighting each other and they stand in the back watching, laughing and smiling like, yeah. They're my niggas. They're my niggas right there. My niggas. It's a game. It's a game. So stop falling for the game. That's all I'm saying. 
Stop falling for the game. You're not going to convince me to hate black women. You never will. If you ever even tried to do it, trust me, I, I really recommend you don't. You're going to see a side of me that you've never seen before. If you try to get me to hate black men, I recommend you don't. If you don't get a side of me you ain't ever seen before. I do my best to be very polite, courteous, honest, respectful, dependable. That's how we're trained as an FOI, fruit of Islam, military man. The training that we have. The name of the military training that is given to the men that belong to Islam in North America who are under the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the same ones Brother Michael X got, same teachings that Brother Dr. Kala Muhammad got, Walathuddin Muhammad got, all of us, same training. But don't ever get it twisted because as a part of our training, we are militant. We are soldiers. We do not aggress. We do not start the fight, but we do defend ourselves. And if aggressed upon, we fight like hell with those who fight with us. So don't ever get it twisted thinking that a man who is humble is weak. Trust me. I'm just telling you. Just trust me. I'm only saying all this again because we have to love one another far more than we have ever done before in order for us to get out of this situation. We 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 have to. Like it's not a it's not a a question of if. It is a question. No, it's not. It's not a question of possibility or, or et cetera. No, it's it's, it is a necessity. It is essential. We will not survive. Literally, we won't. We will not survive if we don't come together as a people. It's not going to happen. It's not. It's not. This government knows it. Every other government knows it. Which is why we have been the the individuals at the bottom of their system, and they have benefited from us because they have benefited from our strategically placed division that has been perpetuated by them until it became self-perpetuating by us. I'm tired of the division being self-perpetuating. I'm tired of the Willie Lynch syndrome, whether if you believe Willie Lynch existed or not, the system that created and perpetuated us being in this condition, this mental condition where we have to always divide about anything or something does exist. So whether if that white man existed or not, white men, period, in the system of white supremacy, period, exist to the demise and to the detriment of black people and the original man and woman on the planet. So I had a lot on my heart that I want to give y'all today because when I was out here in the community with brothers and sisters out here pushing for peace right here, we own it. We in the street with them today going to all these stops where we were either murdered on this corner or a car accident killed this person on this corner. We in different hoods. We in eight trays. We over in the sixties. We over in all these different blood hoods, territories, crib hoods, and they all coming out. Shaking hands, we hugging each other, loving each other. I'm watching the unity happen out here. But then again, where the enemy is, primarily on social media or in our head, they're pushing the idea that unity doesn't exist. Just vote for this white man or that white man. That's the only solution. Just that white man or that white man. And I'm not with it. I'm not with it. Because I, I watch what we can do right here in real life. We can't come together because we do it all the time. All the time. That's what all the prophets do. They went to the street. They went to the people. Jesus did it. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did it. Moses or Musa did it. Siddhartha Katama, the Buddha, did it. Confucius did it. They all go to the people. Go to the people. That's why I'm not the social media. I blew up on social media and I'm, I'm thankful. You know, I'm thankful. But at the same time, what I do is in real life is in the street. And those of us who are activists long before we got on social media we have a different mentality getting on social media and then seeing the opposite of what we're showing right here in real life is different. It's like, wait, I don't understand that. I just, we just demonstrated we're living the peace and unity that we're talking about on social media, but then I'm seeing people on social media creating more division. I'm not with it. Any black man or woman of any level or position on social media who is pushing division between the black man, woman, or us as a people needs to be checked, needs to be held accountable. Do it with love, but do it swiftly because the enemy is watching to see exactly who is perpetuating the division, who is co-signing it, who is pushing it, and they are doing their best to keep them in a position where they can continue to fester the division because they know the only way their system is going to go down is if we unite and we erect our own. They know that. They know that for a damn fact. And they are so afraid of the idea that we're coming together that they're like, we got to get strategic Negroes to push division. Because if they, if they do that, then, then good. Then we have secured our position and our abil ability to remain an authority and supreme over them. But if 
they get in their head that unity is possible and that they can build their own banks, their own schools, their own grocery stores, their own airports, their own transportation systems, their own anything like they did before with the overall 60 black towns that they did have, then our world is over. And therefore, we have lost power and authority. We're not the supreme rulers anymore or nothing like that. And that's what they're afraid of. So, again, they are afraid. <laughs> and I love every moment of it. I love it. Making white supremacy afraid because of black unity is delightful to me. That is delightful to me. So, again, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, it's really time for us to come together. There's nothing else that needs to be said about it. I don't care what you have to say. If it's negative, I have no care for what you have to say. If it is divisive, you can go to wherever you would like to go. Um, but your push and anyone's push for division will not work because this is the time of our rise. There is nothing that's going to stop it. It is inevitable. It is done biblically. Allah said it. Quranically, Allah said it. Scripturally, scientifically, mathematically, geographically, literally, scientifically again. It is done. It's over. It's finished. Unity is our solution. Separation from this system and building our own is the ultimate solution. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it. The ultimate, ultimate solution is separation. He didn't necessarily want to do it, but he said that is the ultimate solution. If we cannot get along with you in peace while you are in a position of authority, then we must separate and do something for ourselves. Little China, little Armenia, little Cambodia, little Taiwan. You have all these little towns, other towns. There's a major a Jewish district in every major city in America where they are separate but equal. They have their own transportation system. They have their own grocery stores. They have their own schools. They have their own everything. And they are not ever talked about or called racist because they have their own everything. We deserve to have our own. That is what we will push for. There is nothing else that needs to be said. I'm not going to be a 30-year young brother out here under a system of white supremacy where a white man behind closed doors is calling me boy, boy, boy all damn day. That's not happening. I'm a black man, the original man. You are the black woman, the original woman, the mother of civilization. And those who come from us, brown, red, yellow, and even white. So we are the mothers and fathers of all of them. And we need to act like it. Plain and simple. Again, I love y'all, man. I like to continue to bless each and every one of y'all. I'm on like a thousand because I just came from being out here with the people and my energy is so high and I'm in love with everybody. And I love it, love it, love it. And I just wanted to share that with y'all. Choose to vote for whoever you vote for. But at the very end, I'm voting for God. I'm voting for us because I believe that we are the ones who are going to bring in a new world. Peace. And a lot of blessings to each and every one of you. Assalamu